ABC Sports presents the 1981 World Series. From Yankee Stadium in New York, the Dodgers and the Yankees in game two. The big hit in the Yankees' opening game win, a three-run home run by Bob Watson in the first inning in his first World Series. The big defensive play of the game by the Yankee third baseman Greg Nettle, spearing Steve Garvey's liner, stopping a potential Dodger rally in the eighth. And the winning pitcher, Ron Guidry, seven innings, four hits. And the Yankees won it 5-3. Tonight, game two. For late October, you could not have better weather for this second game of the 78th World Series between the Los Angeles Dodgers and the New York Yankees. And this ABC Sports exclusive is being brought to you by Chevrolet, who invites you to see all the good things for 1982 at your local Chevy dealers. Chevy makes good things happen. And by Lohenbrau, when you want the taste of a truly great beer, there's really only one. Tonight, let it be Lohenbrau. And by Gillette, makers of Right Guard Solid with Action Trigger Formula. The more you sweat, the more protection you get. And hello again, everybody. I'm Keith Jackson. And uh, I guess the way the Dodgers have been playing of late, you dare not say to leave Yankee Stadium 0-2 would be terminal for them. Then on the other hand, the way the Yankees have been playing of late, to leave here two games to none might be enough cushion for them. We'll see. There are some lineup changes again tonight. The Los Angeles lineup sends Ken Landro back into center field and Pedro Guerrero over to right with Rick Mundy going to the bench. The New York Yankees, they'll be without Reggie Ladies Jackson again tonight. Going into right field with a right-hander on the mound for Los Angeles will be Oscar Gamble replacing Lou Piniella. And there are some changes in the New York batting order which we will document for you before the first pitch. Tonight, Bert Hoot, the right-hander, goes to the mound for Los Angeles. He is the stopper for the Dodgers. The Yankees had six great defensive plays last night. And tonight, Tommy Lasorda hopes that if that ball has an eye, it is one of Dodger blue. We'll see that, too. Right now, Robert Merrill of the National Anthem. By the dawn's early light, what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming those broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight for the rumpus we watched was so gallantly streaming and the rock is regular the bombs bursting in air through, through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, sailors, that stars pang, and no yet wail for the land of the free and the hope of the Merrill, who watched last night's game on television in Dallas, is back here in Yankee Stadium tonight to sing the national anthem. And the crowd has been pretty excited by members of the Golden Knights skydiving team as two of them plummet into the stadium with the uh, Los Angeles and New York flags, Yankee and Dodger flags, and the last young man came in with an American flag. Now Commissioner Boy Kuhn down along the railing there near the New York dugout, and we're waiting for the ceremonial first pitch. And the man who is to throw the first pitch out tonight is one over whom there was a good deal of confusion yesterday, Mr. James Cagney. To throw out the first ball for tonight's World Series game. He is officially regarded as a national treasure, as evidenced by the Life Achievement Award presented him last year by the President of the United States. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome please, seated in the Commissioner's Box, 
at the home plate end of the Yankee dugout, Mr. Yankee Doodle Gandhi, Mr. Jimmy Cagney. And so the ceremonies are done. We're about ready to play baseball. Game two of the 1981 World Series. Use two good friends. Beautiful. I tonight. thought we were just taking a ride in the country. We are. This is the scenic room. Boy, I'll say. Now hang on, it gets better at the top. What could be better? How about the same view with a thick steak and a cold loin brown? Yeah, better. <laughs> When you want the taste of a truly great American beer, tonight, let it be low and brown. All in favor of missing the next tram down? Let it be <laughs> motion carry. <laughs> now there's a place where they have their own authorized mechanics, quality parts and service, and prices you can afford. Now there's K-Care, found only at Kmart. Why not change to the tire you don't have to change? The KM Special Radial with two fiberglass belts and aggressive tread design. Goes through rain, mud, and snow, yet rides smooth on highways. Now the KM Special is sale priced as low as $31.97. Hey, we'll even rotate them every 5,000 miles at no charge. That's K-Care, only at Kmart. The entire meaning of baseball is time. Baseball is how we get even with those relentless seconds and minutes and hours of life. While the game is being played, time miraculously changes. Baseball fever. Catch it. It's worth it. The preceding message was furnished by Major League Baseball. Starting lineup for the Dodgers, leading off D.V. Lopes. Batting second, Bill Russell. Then comes Dusty Baker, ever dangerous. After him, steady going Steve Garvey. Then the power man, Ron Say. And then Pedro Guerrero, the power hitting youngster. Kenny Landro, the big insertion. You've heard about that. Steve Yeager, who's great in postseason play. And then Bird Hoot, the defense, Keith. Take the field. I mentioned a moment ago, Bert Hooten has been the Dodgers stopper. He's a big man in their pitching rotation. Now the Yankees are in position defensively, and we see Bob Watson, whose step was a bit lighter today after his first World Series hit. First time he's been in the series last night, big three run homer. Over at second base, you have Willie Randolph, who's been dropped down in the batting order tonight. The shortstop for New York remains Larry Milburn. Larry, very steady last night, made one fine play. Of course, the big defensive star last night was this man, Greg Nettles. He does it every year, it seems. Moving to the outfield, Dave Winfield, who had a marvelous throw out of the corner to get uh, Ron Say last night, trying to stretch a single. Over in center field is Jerry Mumphrey, who controls all of that big acreage out of the middle. And in right field tonight, the biggest change of the New York lineup it is Oscar Gamble. He's in the lineup because he's a left-handed batter playing right field behind the plate. Rick Cerrone doing the catching and on the mound for the New York Yankees, the sinker baller, Tommy John, director reflected there. Of course, Tommy left Los Angeles as a free agent and came over to New York. So the Dodgers know it. They know what they have to do against him. Absolutely correct, Keith. They know him. He knows them. And interesting meeting. There's Tom Lasorda. I was with Tom and my classmate at New York University the general manager of the Dodgers Al Campanis and they agreed as you look at the dimensions of the stadium that yes indeed Tommy John can be bunted on Jim Palmer had it exactly right and Tommy Lasorda admitted it in the pregame show so look for some bunting tonight look for the Dodgers trying to find ways to negate 
the third baseman's greatness, Greg Nettles. There are the umpires. Keith. And it's a National Leaguer back at the plate tonight calling the balls and strikes. Terry Cooney, American League at first. Doug Harvey, National League second. Dick Stello, National League third. Larry Barnett, American League down the left field line. And Rich Garcia, American League down the right field line. We're ready to play baseball. As Davy Lopes steps in in game number two. And the first pitch breaks off inside for ball one. The temperature is just marvelous for this time of the year. A beautiful day. There's one on the outside corner to make it one and one. One could see Autumn sitting careless on the granary floor, in the words of Keats. <laughs> Two balls in one strike. Position to eight. Nettles is short at third, and Watson is short at first. Obviously, in New York's thinking along the same lines as the Dodgers had to be thinking, because uh, there is no question. But Tommy is he is he's not bad, but he is not the quickest man off the mound in fielding the ball. And Lopes represents good speed, but Davis strokes it to center, and he runs Mumphrey back about 15 feet to ball down. A well hit drive. That ball was up a little bit. Well, you're going to see that, Keith. If Number 18. The, the key to beating Tommy John Daniel is Russell. to make him throw strikes. That count was three and one. He had to throw a strike. He threw a belt high one, and Lopes hit the ball hard. The Dodgers hit the ball hard last night, but so far, most of them are, are getting caught. Interesting you say that. Lou Pinella said, you know, they were hitting the ball very hard. Russell lays one down. It goes down the chalk and crosses. Foul ball. This is the 33rd birthday for Bill Russell. There's your bunt. Look nope. for it early. That's really a storyline going into the game. It may change during the course of the game. But great playing in close. Notice, Jim? Well, he has to respect it. When you bunt before the first strike, what it does, it, it gives you the opportunity maybe to hit a ball by Nettles. If you do it with one, one strike on you and you bunt and the ball goes foul like that, then he's going to play back because not too many people bunt with two strikes. Only the Carews and the people that really know how to bunt well. Nettles has dropped back now beyond the bag. Now he comes walking back in even with it. The count of one strike on Russell. The ball bounces at the plate. This is also the birthday, since we're talking about birthdays, of Billy Russell's 33rd, Whitey Ford's, sorry, Whitey, 53rd. Of course, that's kind of nice. That's mine, too. And Mickey Mantle <laughs> yesterday was 50. As a bouncer for Randolph, a second. And you've got two out. Mickey Mantle, 50, I don't believe it. Robert Merrill, who sang the anthem the way he always does, so magnificently, got the thrill of his life, he told me. He had a concert last night in Dallas and flew up on the plane today with Mickey. Said he was like a kid all over again. Merrill, a rabid Yankee. Here's Dusty, Dusty Baker. Breaking pitch gets the inside corner for a strike. This is for ball one. Dusty and a couple of other players and their wives leaving uh, Expo, uh, the Olympic Stadium in Montreal after the series of the Expos got involved in a scuffle with some uh, people and uh, sprained his right wrist quite quite severely. But, uh, he played last night, played well, and says it feels pretty good today. Two strike count. Dodger left fielder. Points to the right side. Randolph comes scampering across. Makes a fine play and the inning is over. So the Dodgers are done in in order by Tommy John after one half inning. No score. Yankees coming up. Gamma rays probe. Laser beams scan. Robots perform incredible feats in the creation of Chevrolet Cavalier. Masterminded for remarkable precision. Dedication to detail, exactness of fit, and consistent quality. Chevrolet Cavalier. Mastery of mind over matter. Now get bigger savings with even lower 12.9% financing. I get all kinds in here. Some like it straight, some with a twist, but they all want the best disposable razor. If they like it straight, it's Gillette's Good News Razor, the Twin Blade Classic. If they like it with a twist, 
It's Gillette Swivel Razor. Twin blades plus a moving head that hugs your face. Bolt shave better than any single blade disposable. Good news or swivel. Gillette puts two great shaves at your disposal. So what'll it be? Straight or with a twist? Starting lineup for the Yankees. Jerry Mumphrey leading off. Larry Milburn batting second. Dave Winfield third. Oscar Gamble is in there tonight. Reggie's still not ready. Greg Nettles, you know all about him. Bob Watson, keep pitching him up and out, and he'll be a star. Rick Cerrone next. Willie Randolph, and finally, Tommy John Keith with the defense. Of course, Bob Lemon, the Yankee manager, sitting in the dugout. His game plan in order as he looks out to the Dodgers. And at first base, you'll see Steve Garvey, whose bat is a hard one to keep quiet for very long. Over at second base, Davey Lopes. Moving to the shortstop, it is Bill Russell, who had a fine night last night. Over at third is uh, quite a superior third baseman in his own right, Ron Say. Moving to the outfield, Dusty Baker. In the center field now, there is a change for the Dodgers. Kenny Landro, he knows the acreage here at Yankee Stadium from his time with the Minnesota Twins. He is a skilled center fielder. And Pedro Guerrero, who played in center last night, goes back to more familiar territory, right field. With a left-hander pitching, the catcher remains Steve Yeager, who had a home run to the right side last night. And on the mound, it is Bert Hooten, the Dodger stopper. Now, Hooten, who was the National League Championship Series MVP, 3 0 with an 0 4 1 earned run average, gave up only one earned run in 21 and two thirds innings in three postseason games. He won the big one when they had to have one against the Astros. He still throws the knuckle curve, which can do a couple of different things. He also throws a hard screwball. Breaks the way a screwball would as you'd, as you'd expect from a right-hander down and away from the left-handed batter. The Yankee batting order shuffled some as you noted with Jerry Mumphrey going to the leadoff spot. He is a switch hitter and goes up left-handed against the right-hander Hooten. First pitch from Burt is in for a strike. The temperature 61. Humidity is comfortable. The wind is mild. Clear sky. Now the pitch is low. Two balls in one strike. I was uh, visiting with Happy, and I called Bob Lemon, the unflappable one, last night. I'll tell you this: Happy Hoop fits in that category too. Well, he said he, said he felt fine. Uh, the Dodgers, their three starters, have been pitching with only three days rest, other than normal four, and uh, he said if his arm feels fine. He doesn't mind doing that. He, however, walks the leadoff man for New York. In the bottom of the first inning. And that will bring up Larry Milburn, who is skilled at putting the ball down. He's a fine bunner. And with that in his mind, Ron Say drifts in at third. Mumphrey has speed. Roll toward the shortstop, Russell. Over a, a one throw back to first by David Lopes is not nearly in time. As Mumphrey went rolling in the second base, the ball was not hit very sharply, and they could not turn the double play. Milburn really gets down from the left side in a hurry, as you will see right here. There it goes. Thing I like about her, Hooten. I've known him for years. He's a close personal friend, plays in my golf tournament every year. Forget the knuckle curve, forget everything else. This is a man of character. He will never give in. He throws a knuckle curve, but he will never knuckle under. Dave Winfield standing at the plate. Well, 
has ample proof. You better get him early. It looked to me like that might have been a knuckle curve that just dove at the plate. Well, what makes that pitch so difficult to hit is number one, it, it really drops and he can make it go both ways, but not too many pitchers throw that in either league. And it's not the type of pitch you get a, a chance to see very much of. Melbourne edging off first. And the pitch is inside. David hit one last night. They've changed the contours of this stadium within the past decade, as most of you know. But he hit one last night that was caught, Keith, almost in the precise spot where John Frito made the catch on DiMaggio in 47. Snap throw to first. And Milburn is back. One ball and two strikes. Jaeger will let it go. Well, not too many catchers can throw with Steve Jaeger. When you have him in the game, you're certainly not hurting yourself defensively or offensively. Yes. Not in postseason no. play. He kills the Yankees, as he proved last night with an opposite field home. With one out, Milburn at first. The pitch to the plate is low, and Jaeger comes up with it. Flags around the perimeter of the stadium are virtually still. To say it third, Bobo goes to second. They get him by a whisker at second. They would not have gotten Winfield at first. Keith, as we look at this again, ball sharply hit, troublesome bounce for Ron. You see the drop, and then the quick recovery and throw just in time for the fourth. Bounce throw, but easy for it lopes to corral. In the meantime, coming up, Oscar Gamble, being played by Bob Lemon because of his power, because of the way he came through in the Milwaukee series. Yet one has to wonder, Bobby Mercer on the bench with a lifetime average in the National League against Hooten of 382. Bird gets a strike on Oscar. Remember, Jim, last night we suggested in the first inning with two on, two out, that Watson's career average betoken that he might knock off the Dodgers starter last night and indeed he did with a three run home run Jerry Ross one ball and one strike as the knuckler looks outside the coaches Mike Ferraro at first and Joe Altavelli at third for the New York Yankees Jaeger sets up inside And the pitch is high and tight to make it two and one. Well, that's the book on Oscar Gamble. If he's going up there with one thing in mind, that's to hit the ball into the right field seats here at Yankee Stadium. He's a dead low fastball hitter. The book on him as the Dodgers see it is to pitch him high and tight. And I'm surprised he's thrown him uh, two out of three pitches that are fastballs. I would think he'd be throwing him more knuckle curveballs. By the way, for the fans out there, Reggie Jackson is very close to ready. There was doubt tonight whether or not Reggie would start. He's taking this day of rest, and then you'll see him when we get to Los Angeles. With two out and a 3 1 count on Gamble. He's walked his second man in the inning. comes Nettles nine career home runs against Jim Palmer. Look at the view. Isn't that something? And uh, Jim will tell you don't throw it up and out to Nettles. Unless you want to throw home runs. 
But I think this is the perfect illustration of what Yankee Stadium does to a right hand pitcher. It was the last pitch to Oscar Gamble. He has a three and one count. You'd expect a fastball, and he threw a knuckle curveball. He pitched a little bit differently in this ballpark. And for Hooten to win, he's going to have to throw that breaking ball over when he gets behind. And there you saw a good hard fastball away. Burke normally is not in that 90 mile range. He's up in the high 80s. But after he's fed you a sort of screwballs and knuckle curves, uh, it looks pretty quick when it comes in. Now back to make it strike two. Edge to Hooten. Nettles, a dead pull hitter, has hit more home runs and reformed or remodeled Yankee Stadium than uh, anybody. And you can see how tough Hooten has been on the road this year. He's been pretty tough at home, too. He's had a good season. He started off on his way to a terrific year, and then came the strike. The pitch is high, make it one and two. Nettles last night, I thought, just missed two home runs. He thought certainly he had the first one. Remember, Keith? He stood there and watched it. There's Ginger Nettles. Briggs. Lady. The one two pitch foul back count hold. Winfield is at second gamble at first. That long gliding stride of Mr. Winfield moves him swiftly so there is speed at second base. Out off again. Rick Mundy is the man who hit the home run over the center field fence in the fifth game at Montreal. It's a great scene in the clubhouse, Keith, involving Mundy and Lasorda. Tell you about it in a moment because this is an important moment, even this early in the game. One and two with two out and two on. Out off again. By the way, you call Greg a dead bull hitter, and on balance, you're right. But remember, it was Greg who went with the pitch and hit the base clearing double against Oakland that set up the Yankees' initial victory over the A's, Jim. Well, that's true, but he does basically go up there to, to, to try to pull the ball. You get, occasionally, you'll make a good pitch, maybe get it up a little bit out over the plate, and he'll hit the ball to left center field. Inside corner call strike three. Nettle walks away and Greg didn't say one word. Good pitch by Hooten. And so the Yankees threaten, but they strand two. And after one complete inning of play in game number two of this 1981 World Series at Yankee Stadium, we have no score. The Dodgers will be sending the middle of the order to the plate in the top of the second. Who'd ever believe it? What? What a star you were. Those touchdown passes and those game-saving catches and those baskets at the buzzer. My games don't need me anymore. Well, we've got some games that do. Make the best of your recreation time with AMF. We make Roadmaster bicycles and mopeds, sunfish sailboats, head tennis rackets, skis, and sportswear. We make weekends. And weekends were made for comebacks. You guys, hands up! Defense! It's your broker from Dean Witter. I want to see you hustle. Some people just aren't easy to please, especially when it comes to their investments. Joe, did we do it? You look like you just heard from Dean Witter. At Dean Witter, we can give even the hard to please investor something to smile about. Okay, let's see that defense. You look like you just heard from Dean Witter. Emerald Dry from Paul Masson. It's silky smooth. It's fresh and bright. It's emerald cool. It's crisp. It's sophisticated. It's Emerald Dry. Paul Masson said it nearly a century ago. We will sell no wine before it's time. 
Tomorrow is a day of travel. Friday, the matchups there. Two brilliant rookie pitchers. Reggetti, the left-hander for New York, and Fernando Valenzuela for the Dodgers. His victory in that decisive game in Montreal. Now he comes into a ball game that is even heavier, if you will. I suspect those two youngsters will wear the weight well. For a bottom of the first Number inning, six. Keith, in my Steve opinion, Rocky. that was heavy. Hooper's getting break without a murmur. There's Dave Reggetti. Maybe even thinking about tomorrow. He is so very young. But that was heavy. Getting nettles on a call third strike. Over yep. the inside corner, knee high. Here's Garvey, followed by Ron Say and Pedro Guerrero. And a breaking pitch for a strike to Garvey. Nettles is well back at third. There's your butt. Nettles on a bounce. His throw just in time. If Steve had been uh, a free safety instead of a cornerback, he'd have had enough speed to get there. He misses by a half step. But I think the point is well taken that if he had made even a decent bunt, which that wasn't, he would have been safe. That's true. What we pointed out before the game, and even in our interview with manager Lasada about how they were going to bunt, try to negate Nettles in some way, Shows you two things. A, they are adjusting or trying to. Pitch to say is outside. And B, Nettles is perhaps too much on their minds. Is that possible, Jim? After last night's game, I. <laughs> Another chance for Nettles. <laughs> oh. he, he is so tired of looking at Nettles. Did you hear him? On Robinson and on Cox and on Cleet Boyer and even throwing in Honus Wagner and Pye Trainer and Freddie Lindstrom. He's had enough of that guy. <laughs> Cordero is at the plate. And he hits it over the mound toward the shortstop Milburn. So, Tommy John gets the first six Dodgers in order. And after an inning and a half, there's no score. There is just one place where you can go from high school to flight school. The Army. Today's Army has more pilots than the largest airline. Not bad for a rookie. You know, you can stop an air leak for pennies with duct tape. This whole roll costs less than $2. It will easily pay for itself with the energy it saves. Now, there are other conservation measures we hear about. The question is, will they pay for themselves with the energy they save? If you'd like more information, it's in the Conservation Payback Book, free from Shell. Come to Shell for answers. Quick, where's my one step? What? What's happening? Nothing. This party's dead. <laughs> Are you laughing? They're laughing at the hors d'oeuvres. Oh. I got it. And I broke so hard. Smile, everybody. Why is the party over? No one just got it. Hey, everybody looks happy. I thought cameras didn't lie. Polaroid One Step brings a dead party to life in seconds. More hors d'oeuvres, everybody. They're funnier than the pictures. Out! Everybody out! Polaroid means fun. With a One Step. Bob Watson, Rick Cerrone, Willie Randolph. Cerrone, in the center of a great deal of conversation around this city. Before the game, Howard talked to him. Now. You've made your decision. You've had enough of Georgie Porgy. You want out, right? <laughs> no, I want to stay here. I love playing in New York. I grew up here. Uh, what's happened in the past is over. I know one thing, that if uh, I do get traded, 
it'll be a lot easier to take if I have that World Series ring on my finger. Well, three to go. All right, here's Bob Watson. He's playing in his first World Series and first time up last night. Get a three-run home. And he looks at a strike. He did not drive. I should tell you that 1937 Plymouth the ballpark today after I mentioned it last night his insurance man was on the phone and said put it and leave it in the garage. Ball one. Kind of an interesting facet of this man Watson. whom I like very much. He was asked by a couple of television stations for a morning appearance. Loops it right center field. Base hit. He turned down the opportunity for television appearances this morning. Said, "Nope, my morning chore at eight o'clock is to drive Kelly and Keith to school." <laughs> Number ten. I have never seen a man more at peace with himself at this point in time than Bob Watson. Don't you agree, Jim? Loose and easy. He knows the National League from the long career. Great. And if they keep pitching him up and out, he'll be the MVP. No, no doubt about it, Howard. He they pitched him that way last night. Hit the ball hard a couple of times, and uh, that ball was up and maybe not as far out as the home run he hit last night, but it was up in the middle of the plate. So we've got a base hit on the scoreboard as Cerrone has a strike. And here you see Bert Hooten's knuckle curveball. Cerrone, again, is not a good breaking ball hitter, much prefers to hit a slider or, or a, a fastball. Again, out over the plate, and pretty good hit and run man. Very good. Wow. One of the things I like about Cerrone at the plate is he's got adaptability. He can learn, he can adjust as he goes along during the course of a game. Well, he learned that from Charlie Lau, who I think if you talk to any good hitter, they will tell you that each time you go to the plate, you have to make some kind of adjustment. The hitters that do are the ones that are usually more successful than, than others. Edge to Hooten at two strikes. Ball is hit to the right side. Guerrero going back and makes the catch. Carried well, didn't it? Yep, Guerrero there in his normal position, but Cerrone doing exactly what Number Jim 30. talked about. Willie he Randolph. went to right field, and that's Second the way base. he adjusts as he goes along. He's become a good hit and run hitter. A hitter behind the runner. With a right hander on the mound, Willie Randolph settles into the number eight position in the batting order tonight. Tommy John, the pitcher, has moved to the on deck circle. First major league hit was right here in Yankee Stadium when he was with the White Sox. Strike. See how quick that fastball looks after you've looked at a couple of curves. 89 miles an hour. One out, Watson at first base. And the pitch is outside. One ball and two strikes now on Randolph. The stadium is full, which means a crowd of in excess of 54,000. Did he go? They say no. Here you see the knuckle curveball, and this is the one that goes down and in. He really didn't break his wrist, it just kind of came around with his body, and a lot of times the umpire will not call that. If he had not turned his body, I'm sure that would have been strike three. 2 2 to Randolph. Much foul to the right side. I remember one time in Toronto, Jim Rice checked it on a pitch, broke the bat. How strong he is. Harry Royce. 
set up the old foot there. Ah, he's a good pitcher. He's a good man. He'll be back in this series. Probably can't wait till Saturday night. To say it third goes to second. And they get Watson coming down for the second out. Randolph aboard on the field is choice. And now Tommy John. Five career home runs, Jim. Yeah, but that's over 25 years. <laughs> as old as he is. Number 25. When he started uh, in baseball, and back in the days when pitchers were hitting before the DH, he coated a 40 ounce hickory bat up there. And he also choked up very much. I remember pitching against him in the, in the late 60s. I thought he was always a threat when he came to the plate, but he hasn't hit since uh, 1978. So I'm not sure how much he was out here early hitting bat taking batting practice. And begging too, because I was over there watching him every time he hit one, he was all over hit. <laughs> oh, you see the second half earned run averages, and now you understand about Bird Hooten and what he's meant to the Dodgers. In case you'd like to know, the stick he's got in his hand now is 35-35, and he hits that to Davy Lopes. He throws to Steve Garvey, and the inning is over. Oh, the Yankees leave another one. And after two, there's no score in game two. Oh, a once in a lifetime play. But I've got an instant replay forever on my RCA convertible video recorder. It's really two VCRs in one. It records my TV favorites, and it converts to a portable home movie outfit. So I can record Moose's big plays too. The RCA convertible. Two VCRs are better than one. No one gives you more VCR than RCA. Ah, new car. Chevy Chevette. Must have cost a fortune for the fancy wheels and white striped tires. Standard, father. Radio. Reclining seats. <laughs> On your salary. Standard, father. Along with front disc brakes and radio tires. And these fancy stripes. $89 extra. And why would you spend $89 on stripes? The devil made me do it. Oh, what? Chevy makes good things. <laughs> the devil, you say? Have Come, discover stamp collecting. Come, discover the America you may never get to see. Come, explore your heritage. With U.S. commemorative stamps, you'll relive great moments, meet great people, and see great beauty. It's an experience you can pass along for generations. So come to the post office and discover stamp collecting with the Frederick Remington stamp. I'm Irma Bombeck, and I've created a new comedy about Maggie, a devoted wife and mother. I wish you would not refer to your grandchildren as Cain and Abel. Meet Maggie, premiering Saturday. <laughs> Coming up against Tommy John, Kenny Landro in the Dodger clubhouse before the game. Al Campanis, Tommy Lasorda discussing the starting lineup. Campanis pointing out that the scouts reported that Landro killed the Yankees when he was in the American League. Well, maybe not kill them, but often hurt them sometimes with the punt. So Lasorda said, we'll go with Landro, and he, we will have him bunt if the occasion suits. Whereupon Rick Monday, and Lasorda said, watch Monday, came charging in and said, Skipper, this is my last time around. How could you put me in yesterday against Gidry's heat and let Landry go in when John doesn't throw that heat? He did it, of course, in great fun. Landro, Yeager, and Hoot. I've always had a theory about Tommy John that he throws so many down and away fastballs to right handers that he has more trouble against left handed hitters than he does right handed hitters. Interesting point. By the way, mistakenly, I said Landry. I'm thinking of Tom's comeback against the Rams last Sunday. Landro, of course. John has the edge. He's at two strikes. Landro had a big thing going. He was at a 327 average in May. But he never quite regained that stroke in the second season. Little check swing roller back to the mound. And you've got one out. And no punt. 
Number seven, Steve Yeager. Here's the man that homered for the Dodgers last Number night, seven. Steve Yeager. Kenny Neba has gotten back to that 31 game hitting streak form that he had with Minnesota. So he was hitting the ball sharply, a live bat in the early going this season. One out as Yeager steps in and takes. Over. But I think when you talk about a, a player that goes from one league to another, a lot of times it takes time for him to, to learn the pitchers in that league, and I think it takes less time for the pitchers to learn him. And I, probably the second time around, they made some adjustments. Well, if anybody in town ought to know Tom and John, it should be Steve Yeager, right? I would think. It's interesting about John, he's faced seven batters and thrown six ground balls, which is, uh, as you said, he is a sinker ball. Harry Melbourne feels it just above the navel and throws it out. Of course, I wouldn't call that a ground ball. That was more like a line, one out of a line shot. And Very good. Pitcher number 46. The thing coming at you like that with overspin on it, difficult to handle. Larry did a good job with it. Here comes Bert Hooten. But what he did do, Keith, was stay in front of the ball. Right. And you saw Ron Say do the same thing earlier. If the ball's hit hard, the, the important thing is to try to keep the ball in front of you. The way to do that is to get in front of it. Happy takes a strike. When you see a situation like this, Jim. John knows the Dodgers. The Dodgers know him. Another call strike. Who's got the edge in your view? Well, I talked to Tommy, and he has never pitched against the Dodgers. So you would think that that he knows them, I guess, from playing, but he but never ever pitching against them. He strikes out Bert Uten, so he has retired. The batting order in order. After two and a half, no school. In just a jiffy, I can help make your GM car run cleaner, run longer, and save gasoline. How, Mr. Goodrich? Well, maybe it's time for a new set of genuine GM filters to clean the oil, to clean the gasoline, to clean the 10,000 gallons of air your engine mixes with every gallon of gas. Tall order. And there's still time to check your wipers. Keep that great GM feeling. That was fast, Mr. Goodrich. With genuine GM parts. Place won't be the same without you, Helen. I could stay on a few more years. Oh. Many Americans retire with only a gold watch. Century, one of the country's largest insurance companies, is helping corporations offer employees more. Century developed Retired Lives Reserve, a benefits package that provides life insurance and peace of mind that continues even after retirement. Helen, all's well that ends well. All's well that begins well. <laughs> with Century, you know all's well. Dallas Morning News, 3 a.m. You know this crew gets heartburn, and when they do, there's no time to stop. No wonder so many people take Rolaids, the tablet that gives millions 100% relief. Like a sponge, Rolaids antacid medicine consumes 100% of the acid required to give millions 100% relief. With Rolaids, you can keep going. Rolaids. Rolaids spells 100% relief. Saturday, NCAA college football action as Nebraska attacks Missouri in a Big 8 battle. Minnesota tackles sixth-ranked Iowa, plus other regional games, Saturday on ABC. Mumphrey, Milburn, Winfield, second time around now for the Yankees against Burt Hooten in a scoreless ball game going to the bottom of the third inning. Jerry Mumphrey. Mumphrey opened the ball game with a walk. He is one of two Yankees that walk in the first inning. Let that one go early, and it sails outside. Troublesome hit on Mumphrey. You know, Jim, good batting eye. That's from either side, not weak on either side. He a little bit better left-handed. Guerrero, for out number one. <laughs> That's Fu Manchu in the ball, man. That's what Lasorda called him today. Said, I don't want to see that guy. Rudy May with the glasses. It's Dom Scala who does the bullpen catching. Coaching out there. All one. 
Milburn. To center field for Landro. Two down. Now Winfield. Winfield took the collar last night. Would you call Hooten a stamina pitcher, or does he have trouble after seven innings, Gene? Well, I don't know if he has trouble, but he rarely pitches more than seven innings, and, and maybe that's because they, Steve Howe has been very effective for the Dodgers in the bullpen. But talking about this particular inning, you have Winfield up here. You've got the two guys that can run out ahead of him. And if you want to face Dave Winfield, you want to face him with two outs and nobody on base. By the way, you hedged on a prior question. Who's got the advantage, John or the Dodgers? I would think Tommy John would have the advantage. Why? Well, because if Tommy doesn't pitch that many complete games either, but if I had to go to the bullpen late in the game, <laughs> Steve Howe's a, a tremendous young left-handed reliever, but I think that you'd have to go with Gossett. That's a strike. He went around. Again, he was looking at a knuckle curve. And Dropped out from under him. One and one, the count on Big Day. Popped him up. Jaeger coming to the dugout. There'll be no play. It's in the crowd. Every time I see a catcher run to the dugout, my mind flips back to Earl Batty running into the dugout at Dodger Stadium. 1965. Whoa. He, he didn't was, run very fast, but he he was there. Great catch. I remember a play Keith and I saw at Fenway by Butch Hobson when Butch was with the Red Sox. Just an extraordinary. Monday night baseball. I tried to catch him when he went down the runway, and then I decided I was going to have to do it with my right arm. <laughs> Bill Russell throws him out, and so Happy Hooten. Does a good job in the bottom of the third, and we've played three with no score. There's just one way. One of a kind. To describe our specialty. He's genuine Colonel Sanders. All you gotta say is original recipe. Mm, yeah. America's favorite, bite after bite. Number one. Kentucky Fried Chicken, we do it right for you. How would you describe the perfect chicken? Just one way. Original recipe. Kentucky Fried Chicken, we do chicken right. You can get this Xerox desktop copier for just how much? It lists for $29.95. Just $29.95 for the quality and reliability. Be, uh, look, it could be a couple hundred less with trade in. Just $27.95 for. Many trade ins run around $500. Just $24.95. Trade ins go as high as $1,000 or more. Just $19.95. They also help you finance it at low interest rates. Get this Xerox copier for just $29.95 and down. Find out how far down calls Xerox. I didn't bother you, did I? about to see the fastest animal in the world captured captured by a 35 millimeter film that's faster coda color 400 because the faster the action the more you need coda color 400 the fastest 35 millimeter color print film from kodak america's storyteller Lopes, Russell, Baker, second time around for the Dodgers against Tommy John. Before the game, Howard talked to Tommy. Do you feel that the extra rest the Yankees have had will benefit them or oddly maybe hurt them? Howard, I hope it'll help us. Um, our pitchers, other than myself and Russell, are power pitchers. And I think with the extra rest, it will give uh, Reggetti and Guidry and Gossage and Davis, I think, a little more pop on their fastball. And that's what they live and die with. Um, I've been throwing, a, during the off times here, I've been throwing a half an hour, 45 minutes every day, trying to keep my arm down, trying to wear it down so that I don't overthrow. Um, when I tend to have too much rest, uh, my sinker doesn't sink 
and that's when I get in trouble. He comes outside to David Lopes, the ball one. I think in all the case of virtually all sinker ball pitchers, though, they'd do better when that arm's a little tired. Lopes swings and misses for one and one. You agree with that, Jim? Well, definitely the only ball that's been really hit hard tonight is the 3 1 pitch to Davy Lopes. And he was a leadoff batter. Uh, Tommy, I'm sure, was trying to find out what he had and got behind him, threw him a belt high fastball, and he hit it hard to center field. Good point. Meantime, seven of nine batters, as John has thus far at least been impeccable, have hit the ball on the ground. Two and one. There's Bird Hooten. To the right side, Randolph. One up. Last night, Lopes grounded out third to first, short to first, second to first. The only guy he missed was Watson. He was trying to get that one over to Bobby. Well, that may not be a bad idea because if I was going to have to pick somebody in the Yankee infield that I wanted to hit the ball to, it would be Bobby Watson. Not a bad defensive player, but compared to the other gloves in the Yankee infield. Well, he misplayed a ball in the Milwaukee series. But Billy Russell looks at a pitch low and outside. And what do you know? Tommy John has just pumped one up there at 86 miles an hour. I don't believe it. That's an upset. Ball is hit over Nettles' head. Milburn backhands it. Long throw is in time. Well, that's not nine out of 11. There's Sally John. What a lovely girl. And what they went through. And what a remarkable story about their son Travis and the way he's recovered. There's the play again. Nine out of 11 batters have hit the ball on the ground thus far against Tommy John. Tommy yelled at me tonight and I was leaving to come upstairs. He said, lie a little bit about my fastball. Will you, if it gets over 80, take a picture. <laughs> I swear he threw a fastball 77 miles an hour in one game this summer. Jim. I'm sure he got the batter out with it. <laughs> <laughs> he is a clever pitch. It's okay. like a clever box, you know? Well, he doesn't have a whole lot of options. I mean, you know what he's going to do. He's going to throw that sinker away. He's going to occasionally throw your breaking ball. You just can't wait for it. It just doesn't come up there as fast as you think it's going to. What a beautiful shot from the blink. The big ballpark. That's the America out of Houston, Texas. Pilot is Captain John Moran, Spring, Texas. My cameraman Billy saw. And Sally John, who's expecting November 24th. That, that is correct. One-two pitch. Struck out Baker. Three up, three down for the Dodgers. Top of the fourth. Time. The truest test of any product is how it performs over time. Now, this. Magnavox Star System Color Television. Designed for the highest reliability in Magnavox history. Design concepts, technology, advanced manufacturing systems for a picture as reliable as it is bright and clear. Magnavox. The brightest ideas in the world are here. Today. I've had to write some tough things about some tough guys. But there's one guy I can't write anything bad about. His unique brand of baseball has made him a living legend. So have his commercials. They got me to try his favorite beer, light beer from Miller. Light's less filling, and it really tastes great. So I bought this light for that renowned, yet humble man, Art Thrunger. Cheer up, Billy. One day you'll be famous, just like me. <laughs> light beer from Miller. Everything you always wanted in a beer, and less. The decision is in on all the marbles. The New York Times says, have a ball with this slam bang, wise cracking comedy. Rex Reed says, more thrills than a roller coaster. It out Rocky's Rocky, says Bernard Drew. Yeah. And the New York Daily News says, what a night, what a fight, what a movie. Anything goes here. Peter Falk in all the marbles. Rated R, now playing at a theater near you. Barter, trade without money, a $200 million worldwide business. The only thing you're changing is the method of payment. Tomorrow on ABC's World News Tonight. The lineup of ABC Sports presentations on Sunday. 
the York City Marathon starting at 10:30 Eastern time. That's going to be set over much of the world. Our college football 81, Fort Beat. Now we'll go to the bottom of the fourth inning for Oscar Gamble, Greg Nettles, and Bob Watson. I think I have caught the All-Pro code. Oscar in his first trip to the plate walked off Bert Hooten and he takes ball one in his second time up. It's only the fourth inning but one begins to think already which pitcher breaks first. High fly ball lifted to the right side looks like it'll be out of play. And it is. What's your thinking Jim. I, I don't know I would think that uh, if I was managing either club. If I got a man, a leadoff man on, I think I'd have to maybe sacrifice him. And doesn't look like either pitcher is going to give up very many runs tonight. Well, look at that graphic. That gives you an evidence of what this man has been in his most recent efforts. Just untouchable. And he's one of those guys, if you don't get him early, look out. Like that. What a nifty pitch. Well, that was his changeup. Uh, you know, everybody talks about his fastball that he spots and his knuckle curve that goes both ways. But his third pitch, which is very effective, is a straight change, and you saw it right there. That's foul. And there was another one. He didn't make a very good pitch, especially with the count one ball and two strikes. Yeah, but the previous pitch, the previous pitch was the same pitch that struck out Nettles in the first inning with two on. If you remember the call, third strike when Nettles didn't say a word, he knew. It. No, but that's why Bird Hoot is effective. He can move his fastball in and around. Like a pretty good pitch there. Yes, it did, but dangerous to gamble down low. Victorious low ball hitter. It's gone full now, three and two. The defensive alignment by the Dodgers for Gamble. Popped him up. Davy Lopes wipes the frost off of it and throws it over to Billy Russell. I must say, even though it's only the fourth inning, the way these guys are working, the rapidity of the game, it's a reminder of that extraordinary first game of the 49 World Series between these two teams when, in the bottom of the ninth, Henrik hit one off Big Nuke to make it one to nothing. That abruptly it was over. Greg Nettles fouls it away at the plate for strike one. You were here then, weren't you, Jim? <laughs> what year was that? 49. I was living in New York at the time. I don't think I made that game though. They have television back then? to left drops base hit in front of Baker second hit for the Yankees now there was the time Nettles went with the pitch Jim. well it was the fastball out over the plate but I I think what happened was on the last time up Nettles struck out on a fastball inside and Greg had a little bit of respect for Hurton's, Hurton's ability to get the ball in on him and he just kind of poked at the left which as you said he did drove in three runs against Oakland Bob Watson is up now with one out. Nettles on first base. And that ball is sharply struck to the corner. Foul. Watson's got a live bat at the moment. Interesting in his National League career against Houghton, he had an interesting breakdown. From 72 through 75, he was 10 for 23, fourth 35. But from 76 to 79, he was 6 for 33. Only 182. Sharp dichotomy. Outside. That's Mrs. Hooten. Very attractive lady, as you can see. Hoping her husband makes it, throws a good knuckle curveball for a double play, no doubt. 
That's to the right side foul. When Watson's bat is hot, when it's live, he can kill you in any direction. Right, Jim? Well, when you hit 300 for a lifetime batting average, Howard, you usually am not a pull hitter. And as you said last night, we saw him hit the ball into the right field stands. Hooten's first pitch this time up was a hanging knuckle curveball, and he wrapped it down the left field line. It's very hard to defense a hitter that, that hits the ball all over the ballpark. Pops him up. Jaeger comes back for a look. I don't think Steve's got to play. He doesn't. And I think if you're going to be a successful right handed hitter, as Lou Pinella has done or Thurman Munson did for all his career, in Yankee Stadium, you cannot try to pull the ball. You have to be able to hit the ball to right field. But remember the game we saw when Munson hit one against Whitey Herzog? He talked to me about it this past Sunday at Pepperdine University, and it kept going and going and out there into the bullpen against the statues. You remember that one? Certainly do. I think it's the same game that uh, Brett hit three home runs in. Did he go? No. No, slow. Well, there you get an idea of Bob Watson's strength. He's not known for hitting home runs, but here it's a good knuckle curveball. He, he goes, he starts to commit himself, and he just stops. Well, maybe he didn't stop the bat. <laughs> Questionable. Well, maybe he's not as strong this year as last year, but it's a tough call. It's probably the toughest call in baseball for, for an umpire. I may move to Holland. <laughs> for say over to second to get the lead man no effort at first on Watson so Bob will stay there with two out here comes Rick despite all of the badinage if you want to call it that between him and Mr. George Steinbrenner there is an underlying Respect, I think, each for the other, and maybe even a mutuality of affection. They had that set to in the dressing room after the second Yankee lost to the Milwaukee Brewers. But you heard Rick tonight. He doesn't want to leave New York. It won't be his decision. He said. First pitch misses. Well, he had a fine year in 1980. Of course, this year he broke his thumb early in the year and struggled. That it? really happened. He only was up a, over a little bit over 220 times. I often wonder what would happen if they had lost that last game in Milwaukee. What would happen? There's Mr. Steinbrenner way up in the corner. On the ground to Russell goes the short way and the inning is over. So Bert Hooten yields a single to Nettles. Yankees strand another one, and we remain scoreless through four. Right guard knows a man needs all the protection he can get. That's why right guard solid has an action triggered formula. Triggered to release protection when your body needs it most. So the more you sweat, the more protection you get. Right guard action triggered formula helps keep you dry and odor free all day. Right guard, antiperspirant solid. The more you sweat, the more protection you get. Today, the landscape of investment opportunities spreads far and wide. But there is one place they grow in all varieties to suit every kind of investor. At Merrill Lynch, we brought together a profusion of financial services to nurture all kinds of investment needs. And it is the skill and care with which we tend them that makes us what we are. Merrill Lynch, a breed apart. As an intelligent consumer, I wanted to compare Atari Asteroids with other companies' asteroids. But other companies don't make asteroids. I wanted to compare Atari Missile Command with other companies' missile command. But other companies don't make that either. Finally, I wanted to compare the new Atari Warlords. Unfortunately, other companies don't make it. When it comes to the video games the world wants most, nobody compares to Atari.
the famed monuments in the Yankee bullpen. You just passed Larrap and Lou Gehrig. There's Miller Huggins and, of course, the babe. Always the babe. It's interesting yesterday, somebody, uh, one of the writers down on the field likened Valenzuela's bill to that of Babe Ruth. Really? And, of course, the babe was super pitcher before he started hitting home runs. He sure was. And there is the Yankee Clipper. And there, of course, Joe McCarthy. And Mickey Mantle, who arrived here today, 50 years old. And Casey Stingle, Charles Dillon. All right, we move now to Steve Garvey. There's Thurman Munson, the late Thurman, Yankee captain who was killed in the plane wreck. I love that man, and I don't apologize for it. I'm proud. First hit. Base hit, left center. So now the Dodgers finally get a base hit against Tommy John. Finally get a man on base after he had retired 12. And here's Ron Say. It's impossible to come to this ballpark, to go out into that bullpen, and not be literally overwhelmed by the memories that those plaques you've just seen provoke. Tommy John has thrown just 37 pitches so far in the ball game. Jacob Rupert. We don't want to leave anybody out. Now Ron Say steps in and hits the ball to the right side. Going foul. Close enough, however, to bring a murmur from the crowd and a sharp intake of breath from Thomas John. Interesting, isn't it, Jim? Four perfect innings. Suddenly the grounded single with eyes into center field. And then the Ron Say shot to right. Just foul. Well, he made a fairly good pitch on Garvey. Got it maybe a little bit more in the middle of the plate than he wanted to. But I think what you're seeing is Ron Say trying to go behind, hit behind the runner. As we said, uh, doesn't look like there's going to be a whole lot of runs scored. Maybe you'll want to move a runner along or try to hit ball to right field and get the first and third situation. You look at the plaques, you think of the memories. Say's ball just foul in Don Lawson's perfect game in the 56 World Series. The Dodgers and the Yankees. Sandy Amaros hit one that a lot of people thought was fair. It was just foul, and the perfect game was preserved. 1-1 one, one count on Ron Say. Garvey on first base. Nobody out. Tommy trying to hold him close. It seemed only just Jim because the year before Amaros had deprived Barra with the remarkable left field foul line catch in the Dodgers. Garvey goes. Ball is bounced toward third. Nettles comes in. Another good play by Greg. That time a little running in uh, from Garvey's part, and they escape any possibility of the double play. Here's just a high hopper. Nettles coming in, catches it a little bit on the Greg short hop. Not stays an easy down. Play, Jim. Well, for Greg Nettles, <laughs> I wouldn't say it's too difficult. But I think what you're seeing is Lasorda realizing he's going to have some, to start some runners, get something going. He had Garvey running on the play. Otherwise, you may have had a force at second base. Now you have a runner in scoring position. And the batter is Guerrero. And a tough kid here. Good power. An unafraid hitter against anybody. That's hit to Milburn, the shortstop. Worlds goes to third. Ball gets away. Bad play. Another look at it. Like the ball might have nipped Steve coming down. He had a poor angle to throw the ball to the third baseman. If he's going to throw it to third, look to me like he had to keep the ball up. Well, it's like the base running mistake that Say made last night. So at this time, Garvey gets away with it. Well, I think that's a little bit of inexperience on Larry Milburn's part. I think if Bucky Dent was out there, he realized he had an easy out at first base. That's a play you, you have to make, and you, and you can't be any borderline. Error on Milburn. 
Era allowing uh, Garvey to survive at third. The fielder's choice for Guerrero. And here is Landro. Foul. Two strikes, one Kenny. First big situation for John. Biggest scoring threat in the game. There's Grunner to reach third. Right there. Steve Gunn. Dodgers trying to get on the board. They're in the top of the fifth inning. And there's a big hole on the right side. There's Willie Randolph is playing Landro way up the middle. One ball and two strikes. I'll play Landro on a hunch, Lasorda said in the clubhouse before the game. He's been good against the Yankees. He'll get a shot. Well, Tommy John's not a strikeout pitcher. He... Whoa, that, that was, was there. close. I've got to give Landrow some credit for knowing the strike zone. True. Just missed. 2-2. Two -two. Fouled away. Guerrero was running from first on the pitch. Interesting on that call. You admitted it was close, Jim. National League umpire. What a thought he might have got this strike. Interesting too that Guerrero running, trying to stay away from the DP here on 2-2. Two -two. The ball is swung on a mess. Landro strikes out. Two down. But he's not out of it yet because always troubles him to the Yankees, Steve Yeager. And there's one of the typical Tommy John mystery pitches. Watch it drop. <laughs> Are you suggesting that he scuffed the ball, Jim? Well, if I was ever going to cheat, you usually do it with two outs when you need a strikeout, and Tommy John needed a strikeout right there. Now, what does that mean? Are you, is this guilt by implication? <laughs> it could be. Steve Yeager, in recalling last night's moment of joy for him, the home run to right, could only recall in his entire career hitting the ball out of the ballpark to the right side one other time. And he took him 30 minutes to think of that one. Watch his that foul. He is a full hitter. He's also a pretty good fastball hitter. He jumped on Gidry's fastball and put it in the right field seats. I would imagine Tommy is either going to throw him sinkers away, or try to get him out with a breaking ball. That's fine. I have great respect for Yeager. He wants out, of course. He wants to get away because he's fallen into second string status with the development of social. Two strikes now. The edge goes to Tommy John with two on and two out. And no score in the ball game in the top of the fifth inning. That's hit off John's glove. Tommy flagged it down, throws to first, pulls Watson off the back. Watson makes the tag. Takes a blow from Yeager coming down. And he gets out of it. Glasses flew off of uh, Bobby Watson in the collision at first base, but if Tommy John doesn't flag this down, it's into center field for a base hit. He got a break on where it came down, I'll tell you that. But he was quick in his reaction. There's a collision there at first. Two big men, full speed, and the Dodgers come away empty and the game remains scoreless. Recently, a few extraordinary wines were entered in a prestigious international competition. Wines made from costly varietal grapes, harvested in some of the world's finest growing regions. An oak-aged Chardonnay, a deep, full-flavored Burgundy, a light, dry Chenin Blanc, a varietal Rosé, a spicy Gewürztraminer. And each of these wines, all from a single winemaker, was judged to be among the best of the world. Silver medal, gold medal, silver, gold, gold medal. The wines, all from America, all from California, and all from the wine cellars.
of America's premier vintners, Ernest and Julio Gallo. Soon the house was bursting with rabbits, and the Papa Rabbit said, We need a new house! And our Century 21 agent found the house. That's right. But how can we manage with interest rates so high? I've arranged with the seller to take back a second. It's just one way to use alternative financing. It's all explained in our brochure. Great. Great. We're America's number one top seller. The perfect house. For all us rabbits. Century 21. Another look at that play at first base. Jim felt that Jaeger had stepped out of the base path to interfere. Well, I don't know. I wouldn't call it interference. I would good, good hard baseball. I think he sensed that Bobby Watson had to come down the line to catch the throw that was a little bit off. And felt he might be able to jar the ball out of his glove. You can see him just kind of hit him with his left shoulder. And you just said not too many Dodgers play with the intensity of Steve Yeager. In the manner of a linebacker. Bottom of the fifth, no score. Willie Randolph, Tommy John, and Jerry Mumphrey. And Bert Hooten is in there with a strike. This is a heck of a ball game. There's Bobby Watson, mounting tension, everything that baseball's advertised to be. Yesterday, Dulsville until the Dodger threat in the eighth inning. We're at one and one now. Balls and a strike. Bert does not want Randolph aboard. It figures John would try to run him over. That's hit sharply and off loops into short right field. Fastball away, hit hard. Bad Ball just hop. comes up. Bad hop, they'll give him a single. The pitcher, Tommy John. I would think it might be an error. Yeah. Only because he got in front of it. Ball was hit hard. It is. Yep, it's an error. I've always had more compassion for my infielders than some of the scorers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. That ball was playable. But not an easy chance. They're expecting John to bunt him over. Tommy squares and takes it for a strike. And here you see the difference really in the, the two leagues with the designated, designated hitter and, and with not having it. Uh, I doubt if you'd be seeing the situation right here where you'd be bunting. You might be hitting and running. You might uh, Randolph who can steal a base. Good butt. A beauty. <laughs> so the sacrifice is accomplished by the Yankee pitcher. One out, Randolph at the turn for the top of the order, Mumphrey. So just as suddenly the pressure shifts to Houghton. It had been on John, especially with the ill-advised Milburn throw to third, trying to get Garvey when he had a bad angle for the throw. Now, runner in scoring position for the end. Mumphrey was troublesome last night. Had two hits. Scored twice. Fly ball lifted out into left center for Ken Landro. Two down. The shortstop, Larry Milborn. Now the Yankee shortstop, Larry Milborn, comes up with two out. They've been handling very well. I would say if, if when he bats left handed, he's a much better high ball hitter. And he went over four last night. He's He's been hitting that little ground ball to shortstop because they've been keeping the ball down in the strike zone.
just inside. No strikes. Connie Melbourne. Larry's bride. Hi, Lauren. Hi, Larry. Here's a good example why Melbourne hit 313. With Winfield behind him, he should get a pretty good pitch to hit right here. Took it for a strike. Fastball up at 88 miles an hour. That knuckle curve. Oh, did you see that dip? Rather difficult pitch to hit. He's probably glad he didn't hit it. I maybe would have been a soft ground ball to the right side. 2-2-2 two, two, two out. Randolph off second. And it's outside. A little sticky even there. Bobby Mercer, incredible his continuing popularity. He's looked upon as a kind of original Yankee here by the New York fans. That's because he was going to be the next Mickey Mantle. Well, I'd heard him for a while. Puts down the left side, going to drop for a base hit. Randolph comes around third. Yankees lead 1-0. Double for Melbourne. Here you see a high knuckle curveball that hangs out over the plate. But you've got to give Melbourne credit. He went with the pitch. He, well, he tries to do that almost on whether it would be a fastball or a breaking ball, but that's what he does best. He gets the bat on the ball, he has excellent speed. And he really has gone from a goat to a hero. Yes, he has. He made the pivotal error. He's, and even yesterday, when they got him out every time, once you'll remember, he hit that savage grounder off the pitcher's foot. The ball lay there appropriately for the pitcher, and they got him out. Otherwise, he would not have had a hitless game. So an earned run off third hoop final. Winfield is up now with Melbourne at second. It's high when it's out of the day. He's 6-6. Six, six. <laughs> it's not an earned run, I don't believe, though. I think because of the error. That's, that's true. Exactly. Yeah, it's not an earned run. Pitchers know about those things. I know. <laughs> Especially you. <laughs> of course, I know some hitters, by the time they hit the first base bag, they already know what their batting average is. Milwaukee series, Keith measured Winfield and decided he was really 11 feet. <laughs> Including the tips of his fingers. He's a great athlete. One and one. Oh, these are two tough ball clubs. These are pros. Neither one at the moment invested in youth, but know-how and poise and guts. Two balls and a strike. way up at the top, huh? Two one. Lopes knocks it down. Got a hurry. Gets in. Another look at that one. That time Lopes stayed in front of it, and that was a cannon shot. Watch that thing ricochet right up his arm, right to his chest. But he's able to pick it up and throw out Winfield. But 
The Yankees get on the board to lead after five. One to nothing. Back with more after this word from our local station. Thursday, it's a honeymoon that's out of this world. No more poking. When Mork and Mindy visit Ork. No, 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 no. Doesn't he look amazingly like Elton John? Then Sam Best goes undercover to save Tillman's neck. A fella could get killed up here. On Best of the West. Tomorrow. No bank or savings and loan can pay you more interest or save you more taxes on a new one-year tax saver certificate than Wells Fargo. And none offers you the financial counsel of your own Wells Fargo personal banker. Maximum tax benefit, maximum interest. A personal banker to help you make the most of both. Only Wells Fargo delivers it all. My heart was with Sis, back in England at the christening. So I gave the new mother a ring from the States. Wouldn't have missed it for anything. The godfather was so proud. Auntie M was in her glory. And through it all, little Charles performing like a trooper. Even the dear vicar was there. We felt so close again. Three minutes to the United Kingdom. Two dollars and 40 cents. Give him a call. Jerry Dunphy here. After tonight's game, Tony Hernandez will have another satellite report from the Dodger locker room. And Judd Rose reports on the New York-Los Angeles baseball rivalry brewing in the Southland. See you later. Thursday, the Holocaust. Could it happen again? <laughs> A shot from the Goodyear Blimp America from Houston, Texas. The pilot, Captain John Moran from Spring, Texas. Our cameraman, Bill Sullivan. And what a glorious sight it is. And for Yankee fans, that young man at the moment is a most pleasant sight. Larry Milburn, the shortstop, acquired from Seattle. Nobody paid much attention to him at all. But in the playoffs, what a player he's been. His line doubled down the left field foul line. Scoring Willie Randolph with the lone run thus far of the ball game. One nothing Yankees. Here's Keith. Bert Hooten, Davey Lopes, and Bill Russell. Bert struck out swinging first time he faced Tommy John. Tommy labored a little bit in the fifth. The big man he got was Kenny Landry. He struck him out. He's got one and one count on Bert right now. Really, that seems to be the difference. Last night, the Yankees. Four of their five runs came with two outs. The three-run home run by Watson, the two-out single by Pinella, and we had the two-out base double down the left field line by No More tonight. If you're going to win, you're going to have to get clutch hits. So far, the Yankees have gotten. Burt's gone. They never get them against Scott McGregor. Not too many Shut people. Shut them out five the times baseman. now, hasn't he? <laughs> yeah, that he has. He, he beat them in September, one nothing and three nothing. And catch this, he beat them one nothing here at Yankee Stadium. Struck out 11 and only threw 94 pitches. <laughs> so they didn't hit the ball very regularly that night. Davey Lopes, the top of the order, fourth strikeout for Tommy John. He has walked no one so far in the ball game and allowed the Dodgers only one base hit at the leadoff single to Garvey. Out on Lopes now is one and one. Well, on Friday we see the great young one, Fernando Valenzuela. Two great ones. Two great young ones. And young Dave Rigetti. Yes, you're right. Youngest man ever to pitch a shutout. He was nine days short of 21. The Nettles at third. Tom Lasorda has a recurring case of dyspepsia every time the ball goes over. <laughs> Youngest man ever to pitch a shutout in a World Series game, nine days short of 21 when he did it. Was a kid who I thought had fair at that point in time to become a great golfer. That never happened. The kid was Jim Palmer sitting next <laughs> to me now. On Friday, Valenzuela will be nine days short of 21. Interesting coincidence, you know? I'm rooting for a rainout. <laughs> you want to be the youngest, eh? Doesn't really matter. You remember that game? Vaguely. Only because I was so scared. I was pitching against Koufax. 
just wanted to go out there and have a fairly good game because I figured he was going to win. He won most of the rest of the games he pitched that year. 66 World Series. Remember the catch Kurt Bleffery made? Nobody believed it. Baltimore Memorial Stadium. Willie Davis. Suddenly three balls. There it is, Friday. Forgetti against Valenzuela. Add the two ages together. They don't reach Jackson. Which Jackson? Keith. <laughs> Not run. <laughs> Count three and one to Bill Russell. Shot down the third baseline. Base hit. Could be two. Russ takes a turn, takes a look, and says, no thanks. Single. Not on Winfield's arm. I think they learned their lesson last night when Say was thrown out and on what would be a routine double. But not had Ron's present running ability. And what's the old rule, Jim? If you're going to have to slide, don't try to get that. Not trailing by four runs. In exact. You realize Nobody how close the Nettles came to getting that? Well, he's also was even with the bag. And I think respecting the fact that Billy Russell may lay one down. Dusty Baker looks, it's outside. If I was Dusty Baker right now, I know that they're trailing by one run and he can hit home runs, but where Nevels is playing, he can just drop a bunt down and walk to the first base. The Yankees are on top, one to nothing. Dodgers at bat, top of the sixth inning. You see, he's well back now. And I know many managers, I know Earl Weaver would say yes, but Baker is one of their leading home run hitters. But here in Yankee Stadium, very difficult to hit home runs. That's fine. Jim, at this point, how does Tommy look to you? Do you see any evidence of weakening? Does the Russell single have any portent for you? No, he, he did go 3 and 0 on Bill, and then again, the balls that have been hit hard off Tommy tonight have been when he's behind in the count. I would think, though, Bob Lemon is very aware that he is not. Uh, I think pitched 18 innings in the last 25 days. We'll get somebody up in the seventh inning in the bullpen, just throwing easily in case he runs into problems. That's for Nettles. Over to second. And the inning is over. So the Dodgers are shut away from anything exciting in the top of the six. Yankees lead it 1 nothing. Summer times and first vacations. Happy times and celebrations. Somewhere there's a Chevy at the heart of it. All of the dreams and good vibrations. Winter scenes and decorations. Get yourself a Chevy and be part of it. Chevy makes good things happen. Good things, good things happen. Chevy makes good things happen. No experience, no job. I could do that job, but who'd give me the chance? Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines. We don't ask for experience. We give it. You won't read it in a book. You live it. Pick a service. Pick a challenge. Set yourself apart. Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines. What a great place. It's a great place to start. We'll open your eyes. The honeymoon suite, complete with a new RCA color track. We won't have much time. Hey, that some color picture. Can't get any better than this color track. RCA's advanced detail processor delivers a color picture so lifelike it seems almost three-dimensional. That some color picture. Let's switch to the news. But why? To see if there's anything about our divorce. We'll open your eyes, open your eyes, RCA. America, the girls are back. How about you coming down to my room a little later? Play ball! And they're pouring on the laughs in the season premiere of the all-new Making a Living. There's your George Washington Bridge. A glow tonight on the 50th anniversary. Crosses the River Stadiums there in the background. Across that bridge, you go to Jersey. The Hudson River. All of the glory. Way in the background, the Meadowlands. And you see the lights because of the racing going on there right now. Knock it all you want. 
This is it, the big apple. Oscar Gamble fouls at the plate. And while a new baseball goes to Bert Hooten, this telecast presented by authority of Major League Baseball intended solely for the private non-commercial use of our audience. Any publication, reproduction, retransmission, or other use of the pictures, descriptions, and accounts of this game without the express written consent of Major League Baseball prohibited. Foul ball at the plate, strike two. Standing behind our booth, Keith, an old friend of yours, a great football coach, now the president of the Yankees, Lou Saban. I think inside that soul beats an urge to coach once again. Possibly. What a job he did with the Jews. O.J. loves him. He'll tell you all about it anytime you want to talk. Up high to make it one and two. Jim, what is to you the key difference between this year's Yankee team and last year's? Speed. By acquiring Jerry Mumphrey and, and Dave Winfield, what they've done is they short up their defense in the outfield. Last year when we did the Kansas City playoffs, we could just look on AstroTurf and say the Yankees were maybe one of the slowest teams in baseball. Now they have Winfield and Mumphrey, not only can hit, but can certainly go get them with the best of them in the outfield. Gamble lifts the fly ball to center. For Ken Landro, one out. The third baseman, Dave You weren't happy with your outfield for quite a while. How do you feel about it now? No different, right? They're wonderful. <laughs> No, I think you, you saw Winfield's effect in this. The ball hit by Nettles in the last inning normally would be a double. He can play off the line because he knows Winfield not only has a great throwing arm, but he gets to the ball maybe quicker than any outfielder in the American League. Not hit by Nettles, forgive me. By by, by Nettles. Excuse oh, me. past Nettles. Yes. Oh. Just a matter of semantics. Of course. Of course. All right. <laughs> <laughs> How's your cold? Oh. Greg Nettles up there takes it on the inside corner that makes it one and one. Tommy John telling himself really a remarkable person not just a fine pitcher. Two and one watching him and Sally live through the travail over their little son Travis when he had fallen out of the window down at Atlantic City. Keith, watching the prayers, watching the character, the fortitude, I think it was a lesson in humanity and values. Foul back. I think in moments like that is when real character surfaces. Yogi. Interesting study. He still thinks Robinson was out when he stole home at 52. <laughs> <laughs> 55. That's when it was. Forgive me. The John Padres, Sandy Amaro series. First World Series the Dodgers have ever beaten the Yankees. 2 2 pitch to Nettles is hit high in the air to the right side, but it's inside the ballpark for Guerrero. Two out. Oh boy. They're coming down to the final three, and what a game this is. Bob Watson. Single and a fielder's choice. Well, this is the kind of a ball game that you just let it cook. Let it sit on the on the fire. Keep boiling and the temperature keeps rising and Watson fouls it back. Total of five hits by both teams. Toward the hole, Russell backhands it. Nice play by Billy. So Hooten gets the Yankees in order in the bottom of the six. And after six, one nothing New York. Believe it or not, if nine out of ten of these homes burn down, there's no guarantee they'll be totally rebuilt. Because rebuilding costs are rising so fast, even inflation protection may not cover a home fully. But now, Allstate's got the brand new home replacement guarantee. Get it and get your home built back just like it was, even if rebuilding costs more than you're covered for. Ask your Allstate agent about the new home replacement guarantee. For ideas that make good sense today, you're in good hands with Allstate. This is Polaroid's new Sun camera. 
A new system with the fastest color print film made, 600 speed. But it needs one more thing to turn bad light into good pictures. What's that? A piece of the sun. Daddy long legs. There. A piece of the sun does it. Turn this bad light into a good picture. Sure. You use this on every shot. You see, you've never been so sure of an instant picture. Lovely. Now you just reach up. Well, don't waste it. You've never been so sure. There's a new day dawning America. Today, we're all working to brighten America's energy future. And Sun, an energy company for nearly a century, is helping by developing new sources of oil, natural gas, synthetic fuels, and coal right here at home. America, America, Sun is helping to make a new day. This beautiful day has been brought to you by Sun, an energy company. The great spectacle of the New York City Marathon. 16,000 attacked 26 miles of New York pavement with defending champ Alberto Salazar promising a world record Sunday on ABC. The NCAA College football presentation on ABC Saturday. Two games, Nebraska at Columbia against Ole Mizzou. And the Minnesota Golden Gophers at Iowa City against the Hawkeyes of Iowa. Scoring summary, pretty simple. Randolph safe on an error by Davy Lopes. Tommy John sacrificed him to second. Larry Milburn brought him home with a double down the left field line. Is off field. Here's Steve Garvey, followed by Ron Say, Pedro Guerrero. That lineup speaks for itself. John perhaps beginning to get some pitches up. Lemon has to watch John closely. Every pitch, one run ball game, and again, mounting tension. Steve Howe is up in the Dodger pen now, just starting to loosen up as John misses outside. Tommy in six innings has allowed two singles. He has struck out four. He has walked no one. He has thrown 67 pitches through six. Garvey hits it sharp to the left field, base hit. And up to there, he had 14 outs on the ground out of the total of 18. So Steve Garvey with his second successive single. Well, here's a supposedly sinker kind of gets it more or less thigh high Garvey has two of the three hits and as they say the most important batter that you're usually going to face is the leadoff man you want to keep him off the bases you can bet lemon is beginning to edge around in his dugout seat Garvey a remarkable man you've read a lot of things through the years you remember his scuffle with Don Sutton but as I suggested yesterday, a tight-lipped man who does not care to discuss his personal life, nor should he have to. But he never lets anything affect his professional play. Ron Say is up there now, takes ball one. Back in the fifth, Garvey singled, got as far as third in that fifth inning. Ron Say bounced out to Nettles. Ron Davis is now up in the New York pen. He was ineffective last night, could not get the ball in the strike zone. These are the guys right now facing John who make up the meat and potatoes of the Los Angeles attack. Dusty Baker would be the other man. That ball is hit high in the air to the right side. Oscar Gamble going back to the track. He's got some room. He makes the catch. Garvey has to come back to first base. Now that's the second consecutive time you saw Say try to go that way. The last time up a near home run but foul. Watch this. Would you call that inside out Jim. Yes and I'm sure that maybe his you know he says his wrist doesn't bother him. But and even though it's not his top hand it's his left hand I'm sure that that would kind of make him have more or less an inside out swing. Who was the best you ever saw at the inside out. Roberto Clemente the best. What about the shining moon. Wally moon. Exactly. Well yeah he had a pretty good stroke for the Coliseum. <laughs> One strike count as Denise watches her husband Pedro at the plate. I think the difference is how many had a good stroke for every park. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Oh, what a series he had in 1971 against us. I think he got 13 hits, and numerous ones off me. 
It's laced to Melvin. Throw back one for Garvey. Diving back in. And that ball was ripped. Melbourne was in the right place. A little bit of luck for the Yankees. Another ball that doesn't sink. When Tommy John, like you said in the interview, if the ball doesn't sink, he's in trouble. And I would imagine if, because of Landro being left-handed, this may be his last batter. I would think even if he gets him out, you will see Ron Davis in the eighth inning for the Yankees. Unless Lem is thinking about Ron's problem yesterday. Oh, LeBron's father spoke to me today and said, my boy will come through today. Which doesn't mean that that will happen either. It's paternal faith. See the real Davis yesterday. No question. Two out now. Harvey led the inning. Say with a long fly ball to right. And Guerrero with a line shot to the shortstop. One nothing New York. Dodgers up in the top of the seventh inning. Those are, Tommy John does not have a good pickoff move but what he's doing to Steve Garvey is just to let him know that he knows he's over there. The last thing you want to have is give him a big jump here and have him steal a base. Let's foul back on the screen. Yankees won last night's ball game the opener 5-3. They go home for Friday night Saturday and Sunday. If more than five games are needed, then they'll come back here to Yankee Stadium next Tuesday and Wednesday. Landro hits it down the left side. Winfield cruising. You don't think he's not a fine outfielder? I'll tell you. He is something. So they waste Garvey at first base, and the Yankees continue to lead one to nothing. Everything you ever heard about pickups and meet the revolutionary new size Chevy S10. There's never been a truck like it before. Chevy S10. 28 miles per gallon. 39 highway. The standard four cylinder engine has higher EPA gas mileage ratings than any of the best selling imports. Chevy S10. It offers optional V6 power. Power to tow twice as much as any import pickup. The new size Chevy S10. Order yours today. There's never been a truck like it before. Never. Chevy is the power in trucks. All you people in motion, here's a good notion. The telephone credit card. The easy way to call. Easier than carrying a whole lot of change. You get a monthly record of your calls. Apply at your Bell business office for your free card. Mrs. Wilson. Hi, Mom. It's the newest Mrs. Wilson. All over the land, call soon as you can. Baseball fever. Catch it. It's worth it. The preceding message was furnished by Major League Baseball. Rich Gossage is now warming up in the New York bullpen. And it figures we're going to get a pinch hitter for the Yankee pitcher Tommy John. And I bet you that's going to be Reggie Jackson. Yeah. Interesting, is Team grows curious and curious. In the meantime, did you see catch it? Baseball fever, that catch by Winfield on the drive, hit by Doogie DeSense of your team. Was it the best catch you ever saw? I would say so. Best one I've ever seen. I was sitting on a bench observing. Doug was tremendously disappointed. Saw a home run that was going into the third row turn into an out. Rick Cerrone, Willie Randolph, and the pitcher spot. Bert Hooten, 
for the Dodgers has given New York three hits. The run is unearned. Two balls and no strikes. The Dodger pin, as we told you a while ago, Steve Howe has been loosening up for some time. Dave Stewart has now joined him. Second hitter and Hal being their outstanding reliever, they may go with Forrester, who pitched very well in September. Coming off elbow surgery. Luton is now gone to three balls and no strikes to Simone, leading off to New York in the bottom of the seventh. Three and one. is up with the bat in his hand the Yankee dugout Bobby Mercer walks around and let's see who comes out as the pinch batter Willie Randolph walking to the plate as Mercer number two Keith this is the Willie seventh Randolph. inning remember Jim Palmer told you folks earlier when we discussed the question of stamina that Putin while a great pitcher has not that many times gone past seven innings. Well, also, this is the type of game, Howard, that you know every pitch might mean the ball game. Now he knows that he probably has no chance to win if he gives up another run, especially with the record the Yankees have. You know, they've won 55 out of 56 when they lead going into the seventh exactly. inning. Exactly. And he knows that. Randolph at the plate. Mercer is in the on back circle, say coming in at third, expecting bunt. The pitch is low and away, ball one. He might be laboring a bit here. He's a gritty fellow. Well, I think this is where compassion from the manager sometimes stands in the way of good judgment. He's pitched a great game. He's pitched three outstanding games. You'd like to see him have a chance to win it, but he is tiring. There's ball three. And Willie Randolph's not going to swing at a ball. I mean, that's the one thing that Willie can do. He makes you throw strikes. And sometimes when you get a little bit tired, the, the legs and the arms just don't work together. One of the better traits that Randolph has as a ball player, and even conceding he's had an off year at the plate, he does not, he rarely spikes around. Two aboard, walk two in a row. That's the fourth. Base on balls, he's thrown 99 pitches. Saw to talk to him and the applause building for Bobby Mercer hitting for the pitcher Tommy John. I'll tell you, they have a special feeling for this kid. He also was Thurman Munson's best friend. He and his wife still stay in steady touch with Diane Munson. Brown Lasorda coming out of the dugout there. That may be it for first. Joe Altabelli has come down from third base to talk to Bobby Mercer while Lasorda goes to the mound with a, a heavier problem. He wants the left-hander. That's Forster, unless Howe is already warmed up and ready to come. So Terry Forster is the left-hander coming out of the bullpen for the Los Angeles Dodgers relieving Bert Hooten. 
Thursday, a high school reunion. Can you believe who I'm with? Who are you? Sparks memories of the good old days for bosom buddies. Woo! And when Lotka takes on Alex's personality. What do you think of the human race? I'd like an outsider's opinion. What happens to Alex? Thank you very much. Taxi. Tomorrow. Just imagine flying to Europe free. Just for flying TWA in the U.S. It's TWA's frequent flight bonus. Fly just 60,000 miles during the next 15 months and get two tickets to Europe free. Other bonuses start at just 10,000 miles. TWA, the only airline that offers two free tickets to Europe. You're gonna like us, TWA. A bank that's looking forward is always looking for better ways to serve its customers. And here's one of those ways. When you open a Security Pacific Bank tax-free savings account, you'll get a high rate of interest on your savings. And it's tax-free. And you'll also get this nine-function calculator with memory. Free. It's something you can count on now. Only from Security Pacific Bank. High interest, tax-free. Free calculator, too. Security Pacific Bank. The looking forward bank. I'm Jeremy Dunphy. Join us on Eyewitness News when Ted Dawson and former Dodger Wes Parker analyze game two of the series. We'll tell you what happens when the Signal Hill City Council meets to discuss police brutality. The $12,000 Dream House, Thursday night. Terry Forster called in out of the bullpen to relieve Bert Hooten here in the Yankee seventh as New York. Profiting from the wildness and tiredness of Bert Hooten. Have Rick Cerrone at second base. Willie Randolph at first base. Lou Pinella is swinging the bat in the dugout. Forster having been announced. But uh, it may very well be that they'll go ahead and let Bobby Mercer do what most everybody in the ballpark is expecting. But nobody out. Harry Forster coming off uh, surgery of the left elbow. Seems almost unbelievable, but that young man, this is his first World Series appearance ever. He came to the Yankees, la labeled as Jim Palmer put it, keep Bobby in the Big Apple. That's the way they love him here. Labeled another man. It haunted him. He couldn't possibly have been that, and he knew it. But a quality ball player he has always been. A quality hitter. Look for 20 home runs or thereabouts, 80 or more runs batted in. Ten years with San Francisco and with the Chicago Cubs, but back where he started, and here, as I said, he represents the big apple. Put you down, it's a good one. Forster off the mound, throws. Just get it, just get it. Runners move up. Jerome the third, Randolph the second. One out. Well, this is a fixture perfect bunt. I didn't know he could bunt. Look at all these years. He could have been legging out hits. Bunts it to the third baseman, the guy you want to have kill the ball. Even though on the Dodgers, Garvey doesn't have the good arm. Forrester makes an excellent throw. Just out by what a guess a half a step at first. He got down there very well. They will walk Mumphrey to give him a play at any base and set up, obviously, the double play opportunity. The man in the on deck circle, however, is the man that stung him, Milbert. Back in the days when Terry Forster and uh, Rich Gossage were teammates in Chicago, there were those who said, Left-hander is faster than the right-hander, and he may have been. I got a letter from uh, my old roommate who used to play with the Orioles, Davey Leonard, who was playing in winter league, and he said that the White Sox got this kid that just struck out Terry Crowley. He, he was lying on the ground when the umpire called the, the called the third strike, and it was Terry Forrester. And he has such an outstanding slider. I think that's why he's had so many problems with his with his elbow after the two surgeries. All right, the bases are loaded with one out for the Yankees at the bottom of the seventh and a one nothing ball game New York leading Forster on in relief of Hoop. Russell second for one back to first they get the double play. Well how. 
do you do? Forster comes in out of the bullpen and slams the door. And we've played seven, and we've still got a ball game. The Yankees leading by a score of one nothing. The high bouncer, Russell, flipped it to Lopes, and Davey burned it on to first base to get the double play. And so the Dodgers dodge a bullet. United announces great low prices on complete Hawaii vacation packages. Prices that bring Hawaii closer from the East Coast, closer from the Midwest, closer from every city United serves. United, once in a lifetime prices for a once in a lifetime vacation. Honey, what? it's the McDonald's passport agent. No. Yes, here to help with your McDonald's passport. Oh, Ooh, naughty, naughty, you haven't been played. Didn't think there were any prizes left. Oh, millions. $100,000 in cash or travel. No. $300,000 cash or travel. No. Instant cash and food prizes, too. Oh, but you better hurry. Your passport's about to expire. No. Yeah. Hang on to your passports and play. <laughs> My alternator light won't go out. Uh-oh. What do you think it is, Mr. Goodwrench? Well, let's take a look. Mr. Goodwrench has the right GM equipment available to work on your General Motors car. Thousands of dollars worth. But he also knows the value of a well-placed thumb. What's the problem? Just a stretched belt. I can replace it while you wait. All right! Keep that great GM feeling. Where Mr. Goodwrench works. With genuine GM parts. Tomorrow on 2020, why is the war against cancer being sabotaged by bad management and internal politics? What that monopoly does is what every monopoly does. It removes incentive. Is there a cure your money can buy? Geraldo Rivera reports tomorrow on ABC. Rich Gossage comes on for the second successive night. Relieving Tommy John, trying to get his second successive save. World Series. He will pitch to Jay Johnstone, left-handed hitter, Your batting for please. Steve Yeager. Pulled him into right field for a single last night when he came on. Jim, you had an interesting look at that. How do you spell the lead? You had an interesting talk with Barry Foote. Get to him in a moment, if you will, about what was wrong with Deuce last night. Darrell Thomas has come out, and he will be hitting in the pitcher spot for the Dodgers. As Gossage delivers, Johnstone hits it high to right field, driving the right fielder, Gamble, to the warning track for the first out. He just missed it. That he did, and last night, you, know, you look at Gossage's stats, and you don't realize not only does he throw 95, 96, 97 miles per hour, he has excellent control. Last night, the most important thing a pitcher can do is keep his opposite shoulder going towards home plate. He was really opening up, and I think there's probably a reason for that. Number one, he didn't have a whole lot of opportunity to, to get loose because Davis came in and walked the first two batters. And the second thing is that they haven't played in a couple of days. So Your attention, please. it should be interesting to see if Ladies he not only has the same velocity he had last night, but if he has better control. Our Tom Lasorda changes his mind. He calls Thomas back Reggie from the on-deck circle and sends up Reggie Smith. So as Billy Sullivan and the blimp crew looks down on Yankee Stadium, Reggie Smith steps in. He's had been tormented by troubles with his shoulder and has not played a whole lot this year. And Gossage is out there with his 95 mile an hour fastball. It's hard from the swing, but this is a proud man, Reggie Smith. I talked to him about going to the American League where he could perhaps survive better as a Bat explodes and he pulls it to right field for a base hit. Two straight. And Rick Mundy comes out. Two of them in a row have pulled Gossage. I was saying, Keith, and you know Reggie so well, being a Los Angelino. Look at this again. Well, he sawed him off on the hands. He got it right in on the hands, and Reggie had enough. On it to pull it. Your attention, please. Steve Sachs is running now for Smith at first base. He has quickness. Young second baseman. 
What Reggie said was, if I can't be a full-time ball player, I'm no ball player. I don't want to be around. And batting, Here's the man that put the Dodgers in the World Series, Rick Mundy. Rick Mundy. He's hitting for Davey Lopes at the top of the order, which means we'll see Sachs at second base in relief of Lopes. Well, can Rick Mundy work another miracle? There you see the fingers across the, the ball, which is across the seam fastball that Gossage throws. Foul back. Monday last night, 0 for 4, three strikeouts. This is Gossage. Tell you one thing, Monday jumped on that first one. He went after it. Well, it's not much of a mystery what's coming. Nope. I would wonder if he has any self doubt. You could, I know that when I'm throwing and I keep throwing fastballs in the middle of the plate and they keep pulling the ball, you got to make some changes. He's got two strikes on Monday. That one might have been out of the strike zone low. Steve Sachs is on first base with one out in a one nothing New York lead in the top of the eighth inning and the pitch is just outside. This has been a tidy little contest. by him gets a little tense doesn't it folks after the heroic home run by Monday we, to get him in the series Rick is now struck out four times in five trips Bill Russell the hitter Strike. And that's more like Goose Gossett not only did he throw that ball about 96 miles per hour it was on the corner Off that, didn't he, Jim? Well, that's it. that's his breaking pitch. Doesn't throw it that that much. But Bill Russell is a better fastball hitter than he is a breaking ball hitter. Sacks goes. Russell pops it up on the left side. Nettles drifts in foul ground. Inning is over. Dodgers are down now to three outs. After seven and a half, the Yankees lead the Dodgers one nothing in Game Two. We got them all. That means it's Miller time. Come on, I'm buying. Miller time. Time to head for the best tasting beer you can find. Miller High Life. If you've got the time, Miller's got the beer. I get all kinds in here. Some like it straight, some with a twist, but they all want the best disposable razor. If they like it straight, it's Gillette's Good News Razor, the Twin Blade Classic. If they like it with a twist, it's Gillette's Swivel Razor, Twin Blades plus a moving head that hugs your face. Both shave better than any single blade disposable. Good news or swivel, Gillette puts two great shaves at your disposal. So what'll it be, straight or with a twist? A phenomenon that's puzzled me is why some people settle for the ordinary when they could have the extraordinary. Perhaps its cause is simply a lack of knowledge. Fortunately, I've never had that problem. So choosing a home videotape recorder was relatively easy. I chose the Sony Betamax. But when I observed how it performed so many complex technological functions with such ease and simplicity, I no longer saw a machine. I saw genius. The genius of Betamax, only from Sony. The Goodyear Blimp America, out of Houston, giving you that picture of Yankee Stadium. 
And we've got some new people to field now for the Dodgers. Steve Sachs has gone in to play second base in relief of Davy Lopes. Mike Sosha has gone behind the plate as he, as uh, Steve Yeager was hit for. And young Steve Howe is out on the mound, and he has been Los Angeles' most effective relief pitcher. He's a young man who really his entire career apparently is going to be one of relieving. Though Tom Lasorda did on uh, on Monday night and again Tuesday morning mention that if he got a win in the opening game he might very well consider Howe as a starter. But he didn't get the win. Your attention please. Ladies and gentlemen. They have not used Bobby Welch as yet, so the Dodgers, in effect, are not wholly committed to a three-man rotation in the series. But Welch has been uh, used in relief by Los Angeles, and particularly so in the Houston-Montreal series. Steve Howe will be pitching to Dave Winfield, Oscar Gamble, and Greg Nettles. Bottom of the eighth inning. The book on Bert Hooten, six innings plus. The run on the board was unearned. He allowed three hits. He struck out one. He walked four. And the first pitch to Winfield by Howe is ball one. Fly ball, short right center. Guerrero coming over, but it is Landro making the catch. It's one out, and they have been able to handle Winfield again tonight at the plate. Yep. The Dodgers are going to have Baker Garvey say they come up in the top of the ninth inning. Long way to go in this game yet. The scoring summary. That's how it happened. Back in the fifth inning. Oscar Gamble has been called back, and Lou Pinella is going to come out of the Yankee dugout. You shut off Winfield, Jim, the way the Dodgers have. You shut off a big part of the Yankee attack. Well, you certainly do, but I think you made a very interesting statement before last night's game. He said, they may get me out, but he said, they're going to know through say out trying to stretch a single into a double tonight in a one nothing ball game got to the ball quickly and held Russell uh, to Russell a single shot. yep so he can help you in a lot of ways to remember also that it helps Dave Winfield to have Reggie Jackson batting behind him Bobby Welch is up in the Dodger bullpen now, throwing Rudy May in the New York pen. There's Welch. He's got some heat, provided us with one of the classic confrontations. Remember that when he struck out Reggie to save a 4 3 win in that one game in Los Angeles back in 71 77. That's fouled away to the right side out of play. Lupinella. Hitting for Oscar Gamble. Probably will go in and play right field. Steve Howe, the third Dodger pitcher. Terry Forster certainly did his job. He came in, got a double play. Inside, one ball and one strike. 92 miles an hour. Pinella, unquestionably, admittedly, a guess hitter, but a very intelligent guess hitter. Two hits last night. That'll be out of play on the right side. Said an interesting thing, Jim, before the game tonight. He said, I had one terrible swing last night. I'm ashamed of myself. I was totally fooled. You remember when he was uh, pitched tight and half-heartedly got the ball out to the second baseman, a short pop was called? That's true. I would say if you're going to try to pitch to Lupinel last night, he doubled on a fastball away. Then he, Royce threw a hanging curveball. He singled a run in by hitting it between third and short. And here it looks like Howe's trying to go inside with, with his fastball. 
Looped out into right center field for a base hit for Pinella. A professional is a professional is a professional. Well, this looks to me it's not a fastball. I think it's a slider. And it's about belt high. And he didn't quite get it in. And Lou hits the belt high pitch pretty well, as you can see. Pinella now comes off the bases and Bobby Brown goes out to run for him with much greater speed on the bases and probably Brown winds up playing and right field defensively for New York in the top of the ninth. Running for Pinella. Now Greg Nettles. Number 13, Bobby Brown. That's Mrs. Al. <laughs> Little bit uh, nervous. Foul back by Nettles for strike one. Well, Steve had a his rookie pitcher of the year last year in the National League, and you know, they always talk about the sophomore Jinx came back and had a fine year. One of the mainstays of their bullpen. I would think if, if the Dodgers have any chance of winning in this World Series, he's going to have to pitch well, especially with the Yankees' left-handed hitters. That's foul back. Edge to how? One, two. Sophomore Jinx didn't bother you. I think it did. <laughs> no, actually, I didn't pitch much my first year. I had, nobody knew who I was the second year. Steve is another collegiate player. Another collegiate showing up in organized baseball these days. More and more and more. Down talking to Ron Frazier, University of Miami coach. Fine baseball player. Little looper, and it's going to drop in center field. He just reached out and popped it. Interesting reaction shot. Well, here's your original check swing. Greg really doesn't want to swing at the ball, but sure now he's fairly happy that he did. That may get us Bob Welch. Bob watching his own deck. Tom's walk was not terribly decisive on the way out there. Stewart and Welch in the bullpen. Watson, Cerrone, Randolph coming. But he's at the moment, I'm sure, more concerned about the upcoming batter, Bob Watson, than anybody else. The plate umpire, Nick Delosi, has gone out there and said, Tom, will you make up your mind? And He's going to make up his mind. Apparently, he's indicating the far man. That would be Stewart. And that's who it is. So Steve Howe is not affected. You were just looking at Bob Welch. You'll see him before this series is over. This is Stewart coming in. Ergonomics, the relationship of man to machine, a science practiced in the creation of Chevrolet Cavalier. It provides an inner sanctum of precisely placed instrumentation for immediate readout. And reclining front seats even provide comfort to six foot six members of the human race. Chevrolet Cavalier, mastery of mind over matter. Now get bigger savings with even lower 12.9% financing. Canon presents a new camera. John, I'm working. Can I have my camera back? Just one more. It's Canon's new <laughs> AE-1 program. This new Canon AE-1 program, super. Just one more. No matter how tough the light, the new program mode makes it easy to shoot like a pro. Here, get to work. The new AE-1 program. Draw in the ball. So advanced, it's simple. And more of both. Canon, the official camera of the World Series. Barter, trade without money, a new way of doing business. Tomorrow on ABC's World News Tonight. Hi, Aunt Liz. Kenny? It's Kenny from Modesto. Is everything okay? Oh, sure. I just thought I'll say hi to Alvin. <laughs> well, that's a long way to call just to talk to Alvin. Oh, Mom says it doesn't cost that much. You right, save 60% calling long distance yeah, without an operator anytime Saturday or Sunday. I'll put Alvin on. Reach out on weekends. Oh. 
you doing, Halvin? And save 60%. Thursday, the Holocaust. Could it happen again? Dave Stewart, a hard-throwing right-hander, comes on. He is the fourth Los Angeles pitcher. Now responsible for the two men on the bases for New York. Bobby Brown at second base and Greg Nettles at first base. Stewart pitched an inning last night and uh, he walked a man then got a double play. So he was effective last night. Now he's got the pitch to Bobby Watson. Last night, he did not face Watson. Interesting situation, Jim Palmer. Watson a hot hitter. Yet the temptation must be there for Lim to perhaps go with Reggie Jackson, which he's not doing. You've still got Revering, who's better defensively at first than Watson. What would you do? Well, I, I think that Lemon's reasoning probably is, is that you have a one nothing lead. You have Gossage on the mound. Why take a chance of hurting Reggie when you'd like to have him for the third and the fourth or the fifth, sixth, and seventh games? There he is, Mr. October, but not yet with a chance to be there. Well, look, well, Bob Watson certainly has not been easy for anybody in these first two games. He's been a hot hitter, whether it's left hander or right hander. The statement he made in the morning paper was, when I feel well, I can hit anybody. I think that's very apropos. All right, the Dodgers are in a pickle again. The Yankees leading 1 0 and trying to get some more, and Dave Stewart is high to Bob Watson for ball one. <laughs> Yankees trying to win these two games on their home field before heading west. Four games, three, four, and five. That's to the hole. It's past Russell for a base hit. And Brown turns third. He comes to score. Yankees lead it two to nothing. So Lem was exactly right. And Watson continues to be the Yankees hitting hero. Well, here you see a low fastball. He just hits it. Russell's playing him up the middle. Can't quite get to it. A 300 lifetime batting average after about 17 years. <laughs> you know you can hit both right handers and left handers. Ball was well hit. And now it's Sarone at the plate. Yankees now with six hits in the ball game. They'll go to second, and he only throws the ball in the right center field. Bad throw by Stewart advances the base runner. That's a time play, and they had a time pretty well. I don't think they really would have been able to get him. Might have been close, huh? Well, that's what they call a daylight play when they, you saw Russell move his glove up and you turn and fire. I think really what you're seeing is Stewart's inexperience. On yep. Watson, threw him a fastball and missed. He throws 95 miles per hour, has excellent ability, but couldn't come back with a breaking ball. And you just. Yeah, walks the road intentionally. Loads him up with one out and a run in, and Willie Randolph will have a chance. Last time they did this, it worked for them. They got the double play. It's an interesting decision by Tom Lasorda that he didn't come with uh, the more experienced Bob Welch. But at the same time, you have to look at Welch in the possible capacity as a starter. I think that's what he had in the back of his mind. I think if Bert Hooten pitched exceptionally well tonight, would have left with the games tied, nothing, nothing, if it wasn't for the error by Lopes. But this is the fourth tough ball game he's had to pitch, and I think he'd probably like to give him an extra day's rest if necessary. Alejandro Pena is now up in the Los Angeles bullpen. Randolph is in now with the bases loaded and one out. And the pitch 
pitches low, ball one. That's the young right-hander Pena. In this situation, you did not see Randolph go for the first pitch, as Melbourne did. No, this is, as we said before, why Willie Randolph can be a tough out. I said last night, it's a mystery how he could hit 232 because he makes you throw strikes. And usually he makes you throw the fastball, and he's a good fastball. That's lifted to the right side. Guerrero going back to the warning track. That'll score another New York run. Three nothing for the Yankees as Metal scores from third. And the goose comes up with two out. Now this could be funny. Well, if you go back to the 1979 World Series, which you broadcast, Tim Stoddard got a key hit. Yes. For the Orioles. A ground ball through the left side. I was astounded. Yeah. So was he. <laughs> Cheated. I expect the the fir tree to fall any minute. <laughs> He's subscribing to the philosophy that you swing hard in case you make contact. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. It looks doubtful though. Strikes him out on three pitches, but it's a big enough inning perhaps for the Yankees. Uh, the Goose's job is to keep the Dodgers at bay in the top of the ninth. New York scores two, the bottom of the eighth. And the two runs have to go to Steve Howe. Deuce Gossage takes a special kind of mentality, attitude, disposition, whatever, to be a relief pitcher, to come into the kinds of situations that a Gossage has to come into. In this vein, I talked with Goose on this very subject. When he knew full well that he might have to get out there again tonight, as he has, the way he did last night. Here we are. There is the problem of coming in, the kinds of situations you invariably have to become into. You now seem so totally inured to it. Is this true? You've got a lot of scar tissue on you. <laughs> well, I think, Howard, that I've always said the tougher the situation, uh, the better I perform. I think that. When I'm backed into a corner, I feel that uh, that's when I'm at my best. And I think that Davis, uh, I think that we have the best pitching staff in both in either league. And uh, I think that our bullpen, uh, I can't say enough for Ron Davis, uh, George Frazier. The whole bullpen has done a great job this year. And Davis really has has allowed me to stay strong the whole season. Uh, you know, he takes a lot of the burden off of me in those, you know, for, through the sixth and seventh innings or the fifth, sixth and seventh and allows me to go the eighth and ninth. Any time that I go uh, seven, eight, and nine, the three innings, I find it pretty difficult for me to come back the next day. Well, interesting point, Jim. Manager's dream to have two pitchers like Ron Davis and Chris Scott, Rich Gossage in the same bullpen. Dusty Baker, Steve Garvey, and Ron Say in the top of the ninth inning for the Dodgers down three to nothing. Strike to Baker. throws primarily fastballs. Here he throws a slider. Baker doesn't react to it very well. Just checks it down to first baseline. 
Now it is Steve Garvey. Three nothing Yankees top of the night. Gossage needs two outs. Her ball is inside. Time tight. Ninety five mile an hour fastball. One after another. Harvey, how's it upstairs out of play? That'll make your count two and two. Looked like the ball, didn't that, Jim? Well, he did chase a low pitch. And, you know, he was taking 2-0. That's why I was surprised that Gossi threw a slider on the first pitch. You would think with three runs down that he would know that Garvey would most likely be taking a pitch. The thing is, with Gossi, you don't have a whole lot of time when you're up there to make up your mind. You know, you see the ball, and if you don't react, it's by you. Comes bouncing back. And it's now three and two. You talk about determination. That man's face is etched with it. And his face looks like Lasorda says. Don't show me Fu Manchu no more. Garvey walks. Ball comes to the backstop. Steve moves quickly to first and takes a turn. Have a look to see where the ball is, but he'll stay there. Third baseman, Ron now, Say. Ron Say. Goose manages to keep you a flutter one way or another. Have you noticed that, Jim? Well, he did last night. He just doesn't seem to be in as good a groove as he did in the, the playoff series. And, and I think a reason for that, of course, is you know, if you go back and look at all the most of the, at least most of the playoff series, they were played in the twilight. When you're playing catch with a catcher, which is basically what he and Davis and Rigetti did, you have a lot of confidence. Inside the Ron Say for ball one. Incredibly though, just I know that baseball wallows in numbers. And Jerry Klein just looked in the book to tell me that the last time there was a three-nothing shutout in the World Series game. Strike it was way back in 1958 when Lawrence Spawn, then with Milwaukee, beat the Yankees three to nothing. That seems incredible, but I suppose the, the movement of numbers. Could account for that period of time. That's fouled away. Interesting to know how many shutouts there have been in the World Series. Well, the last shutout was 1979. Yeah. Did I pitch? I mean, I didn't pitch it. I mean, I was there. I mean, one and two to say. Strike three on a curveball. He was just completely out yet. Well, that's true. You saw Baker check a swing on a slider. And here he waits for the break. And when he does, Cerrone catches it. Now it's down to this man, Pedro Guerrero. And the pitch is low to Pedro for ball one. But really what you're seeing is Gossage throws 95 miles per hour. About the only comparable guy is in the National League is Nolan Ryan, who has an excellent curveball to go with that fastball. So that's, that's why Nolan has the five no-hitters and all the strikeouts he has. Play upon the faces of the two managers and Mrs. Gossage right there. Picture study telling the score and the situation. That's inside. That fastball he brought into Guerrero a moment ago was clocked on the judge gun at 98. A Feller esque fastball. Out of play. Howard said it in your voice. <laughs> They stand as one now, imploring the goose for the strikeout. Got him. The Yankees.
Yankees win three to nothing. Lead in the World Series two games to none. The line score. Yankees got the two big runs at the bottom of the eighth inning to make it three nothing. Three six and one. The Dodgers zero four and two. With John the win, the save to Gossage, the loser Hooten. And as I told you, the Yankees take the lead two games to none. So it's a bit of a bleak outing for the Los Angeles Dodgers. Everybody will pack their bags and fly home. For the Dodgers, at least tomorrow, the Yankees will go along taking a day off for travel, and the series resumes on Friday night. We'll play Saturday and Sunday. And so, the song is being sung at Yankee Stadium. The matchup for the Friday night game. Dave Ricchetti and Fernando Valenzuela, two brilliant rookies, will be back after this commercial and the word from our local station. Holiday Inn. Welcome to our people pleasing Hi. Is that the Holiday Inn East, the Holiday Inn West, the Midtown? The one by United Industries. The one by the headquarters or the plant? The headquarters. We offer you a choice of the most popular locations. You need three hands. <laughs> You're right. People pleasing locations. The airport? The one by Holiday Inn North or Holiday Inn South? It is number uh, one uh, in people pleasing. This is Radiator Rust. It's building up after just 10,000 miles on weak, neglected antifreeze. Now look at a radiator protected with new, improved Prestone 2, same 10,000 miles. Quite a difference. Introducing the new silicone silicate formula Prestone to lock out rust and corrosion in all metals. Now it's even stronger for better aluminum protection. New, improved Prestone 2. The best seller just got better. No wonder we're number one. Premiering Sunday after the World Series. A special two-hour premiere of a hot new series, Today's FBI. You're in a risky line of business. Mike Connors busts open a waterfront scandal. I want this walking garbage off my fear. Today's FBI. Sunday, Sunday night on ABC. The $12,000 Dream House, Thursday night. They asked me to take off my football uniform to tell you about this new Adams Row suit from Richmond. It's a rich classic look. I'd call it traditional in quiet colors and patterns, and the great feel of wool. I like this natural look. If you do, you've got to see these new suits. You can find Adams Row only at a Richmond store. Once you try Richmond, no one else will suit you. Now, can I have my stuff back? Time out, guys. <laughs> can I help you? Maybe. You see, I'm into running, tennis and basketball, soccer, baseball, racquetball, hurdling. And I need shoes. I want to look at Adidas, Brooks, Tiger, Puma, Nike, Converse, K-Swiss, Tree Torn, Saucony, New Balance, Superga, Mitre, Deodora, and Pony. What size? Foot Locker, America's most complete athletic footwear store. Once again, the line score. Winning and losing pitchers in tonight's ball game. It was the 90th shutout in World Series history. Goose Gossage now has run off successive saves in relief of Messrs. Gidry and John. And the Dodgers now have got to cinch it up one more time. They were down 0-2 to Houston, as Tommy Lasorda is wont to remind everybody, in a five-game series and came back to win it. Now they're down 0-2 in a seven-game series to the Yankees. Closing comments, gentlemen. Closing comments. Don't count your chickens before their hats. Simple enough to say. 1978, Dodgers 1-2. Came into New York talking sweet. The Yankees won the next four. This is not by way of hype, by way of fact, by way of history. This Dodger team not disposed to stay down. There's still fight in them, be assured. Jim? And I can't wait to see this matchup with Rigetti and Valenzuela. Should be a great game. If the Dodgers need a big game, who else would you want but Fernando on the mound? 
So it was. But this Yankee team has pitching that the Dodger team did not have in 78. And Yankee pitching, it must be recognized, is utterly superb. Keith. There is something else, though, that you, it's a sense. It's, it's a feeling that I think uh, you only sense after you've been in a several thousand stadiums and watched several thousand ball games. I think you feel that uh, right now fate seems almost to walk hand in hand with New York. That's what we have for you Saturday on NCAA football. But uh, one never knows about baseball is a fickle old lady too. There's the Sunday lineup here on ABC and George uh, Steinbrenner is going to be Howard's guest. We'll have a profile of the Yankee owner as part of sports beat at four Eastern time. You want to meet George Patton and pinstripes you'll <laughs> do it on Sunday. Well he's a bit rambunctious sometimes but uh, I think if we did not have this great plethora of sports media that stands at every cranny and crack a man could go in and uh, chew out his his ball players once in a great while but you can't do it anymore without it being heard. There's your line score again now the Yankees three and the Dodgers nothing in game number two and they resume on Friday night at Dodger Stadium with Brigetti for New York and Valenzuela for Los Angeles final score tonight three nothing New York and we'll be on the air for game three of the 1981 World Series at 8 Eastern 7 Central and 5 Pacific time executive producer Rune Norwich tonight's game produced by Chuck Howard directed by Chet Forty. Technical Director Bill Morris, Associate Directors Bob Hirsch and Dennis Mazzocco. Tonight's game has been brought to you by Chevrolet, who invites you to see all the good things for 1982 at your local Chevy dealers. Chevy makes good things happen. And the blimp provided by Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company. Keith Jackson, Howard Cosell, and Jim Palmer from Yankee Stadium. Travel arrangements made through and promotional fee paid by United Airlines. United flies more people to Hawaii than any other airline. That's what friendly skies are all about. Tonight's game, a presentation of ABC Sports, recognized around the world as the leader in sports television.